I'm not the only one that is worried about um, the coming months ahead. I keep on telling you all that November is when all these crises that we've got going on, because we've got a lot of crises going on in this in the UK, it's ridiculous when you start to think about the number of them we've got at the moment. It's... But this is primarily because of the Conservative government. It's their fault. They've governed themselves into this mess, and, well, they have no ideas how to govern themselves out of it. And it's all going to converge in November, and we are going to see things we have potentially never seen in this country before. We're talking a recession. We're talking rising inflation that is going to eat into people's wages. It's going to raise prices astronomically. Um, we're looking at an energy crisis. We're also looking at the government is actively preparing for blackouts this winter. Um, we're talking at the education crisis as well, the lack of teachers and the training that the, 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 you know, we've got going on there. There's The NHS is in crisis. You've got the court system is at an absolute breaking point. Just so, so, so many things that are just going on. And in November, where people are going to need help the most to help them during this winter, it's still up in there whether the government will U-turn and actually help people in this in this crisis or not, because the government needs to get involved. It just can't stand on the stand on the sidelines like it has recently with the energy companies and just gone. Yeah, we can do nothing. But yeah, um, so this is to be honest a warning, and <laughs> the worst is yet to come. But before we go jumping into that, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one up station thing called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people that do help and support the channel that way. But let's get on with this, because, oh boy, is this is this a warning? <laughs> is this a warning for the future? So this comes from Prospect Magazine, the title of Rising Inflation is Just the Start of This Crisis. How many people lived in fear of the summer of 1914, dreading what might happen? Come to that, how about 1939? People must have known they were living on a precipice then, just as they are now. A disaster is about to happen, but there seems to be a denial all around. And he's absolutely right pointing that out. There is an absolute denial about it. The disaster, the disaster we face is not war. Uh, and I do see the conflict in Ukraine escalating. Thankfully, although, that war has helped create the crisis that we uh, that we face, which seems no one in our government or even the official opposition wants to address. That does not mean, however, that this disaster will not have casualties. There could be millions of them, indirect casualties who will suffer from the fallout that will be even greater in number. And because we face... Uh, because what we face is the collapse of our economy, like so much of life, the economy is very fragile. It can seem almighty and powerful to the most of us most of the time, but that's not really the case. The whole modern Western economy from which we form part of is heavily dependent on several key things happening. The first of these key assumptions is that people will continue to buy most of what companies make available for us to buy, on which those companies spend a fortune in advertising so that we will then part with our income to benefit from them. We, and then they, just assume that this will carry on. When prices are fairly stable, savings are fairly predictable, and employment was reasonably secure, that was a fair assumption to make. But right now, everything is changing. Prices are not stable. They are rising significantly. And for those only only the modest of savings, those funds are rapidly expiring and those available credit facilities, including the pawn shops, and we are in a period where employment is volatile. People are worried about being able to pay for food and heat, and they are not going to be easily persuaded of their need to buy almost anything else, especially when there is a threat from rents and mortgage risings as well. So you can already see, as I said at the beginning, all these crises all coming together. 
the essential the essential assumption that there is a, there that there is a safe that there's a sale uh, in our economy uh, is sold might very soon no longer hold true for a very simple reason that most people may not have the means to pay for what is on offer and that trend is already apparent consumer sales are falling the double uh, don't but don't doubt the significance of this many of those apparently impressive companies all around us are extremely vulnerable to downturns in trade they are geared to growth and if it failed persistently they'd rapidly become unprofitable worse than that depending on the sector they might very easily fail the leisure sector is the most vulnerable as is the hospitality and then great swaths of retail especially for clothing and consumer goods the risk of major corporate failures is high and if you we talked recently about uh, what's been going on in Cornwall, about the hospitality sector down there. There's sort of the leisure sector with, with restaurants. They're having huge problems uh, down there at the moment. That could almost rock the, the Cornwall economy down there. And we continues. And of course, with that risk uh, of unemployment grows. The official forecasts already suggest that there will be a uh, grow by over a million or more, but that could be very easily be underestimated. In the case of another assumption, which has held for some time, that a desperate person can always find a job will uh, not be true either. Desperate people will desperately look for jobs that won't be there any so sometime soon. Another risk um, is also being proved wrong. The economy works on the presumption that most people will, for the most time, pay their debts as they will, uh, as they as they fall due. This is on the basis that a great deal of credit is commonplace in the economy, including for utility supplies. The assumption that people will pay presumes that they will have means to do so, but in the winter to come, the presumption may be inappropriate. Savings are already being depleted. Credit card borrowing is already growing and pawn shops are seeing increasing trade. The simple fact is that for most people, lines of credit are running out. Their access to money to pay their ex ex exceptional bills is therefore already being exhausted. There are exceptional bills coming our way and the scale of which very few have yet to actually really get their heads around. And I don't blame anyone for this. Not long ago, I was paying about £100 a month for gas and electricity. £300 now seems more likely, and I admit I am fortunate. I can find the money, but I know many who will struggle or simply will not be able to pay where, when so many other bills are also rising. Something else I want to add there is we've known for quite a while, for quite a while, that if people were to ever get an unexpected bill of just like £400, which is might what you might have to sort of replace all four wheels of your car a lot of people would be incredible di dire straits in this country and if you got a, such a rise in your gas and electricity bill as, as this guy's pointing out from like 100 to 300 which to him is a relatively small amount from what we are hearing that other people are having to pay a lot more than that it's very very concerning very very concerning Anyway, he continues. Coming to terms uh, with what is almost unimaginable change is very hard. And when that means to pay bills that are, are due just simply don't exist, and assuming that millions will now enjoy credit on those bills, uh, will necessary pay, uh, pay them looks unwise. This, of course, is not the only risk when it comes to the utility companies. Rent and mortgages are also always, in effect, paid on credit. As is the, this crisis develops, I will have no doubt it will, there is going to be an increase in rent and mortgage debt. This will not be by chance. Creating uh, increases in these costs is exactly what the Bank of England desires. That is increasing the interest rates. It believes it is its job to suck money out of the economy even when the result is devastating. And uh, even believes that it must do so despite the fact of a policy of increasing interest rates only works when households have too much income and must be prevented from spending it, which is exactly the opposite of the situation in most UK households right now. 
As such, the bank is going to make the cost of living crisis very, very much worse, deliberately, without there being any hope that they will solve this inflation by doing so. To be clear, interest rates do not stop oil and gas companies profiteering by pushing up energy prices, nor will the increase in these rates end food shortages resulting in price increases. They will just reduce the money available to pay for heat, food, rent, and mortgages. When seeking an ex explanation for this crisis to come, blame can already be laid at the government store for allowing the bank to be reckless and for not controlling fuel, gas and electricity prices, all over which it has considerable control. Just under 50% of what we pay for for petrol and diesel is tax. It's less for electricity and gas, but more almost 20%. The government has the scope to reduce the prices for consumers if it wanted. And it could also impose price caps on those products. Norway already has, so has France. By changing the way that energy price caps are calculated in the UK, we could also massively reduce the profit that companies are making at the present, but the government won't do that. I say just to emphasise that the crisis we are facing is, of course, part of the result of matters beyond our control, but that our government could do a vast amount to address it. That might include substantial increases in benefits and support for those on low pay, whether they are on benefits or not. It should be increasing taxes on the profits of energy companies and banks who will profit massively until our economy falls. Taxes on investment in income should go up because companies are paying out more vastly money to them to their shareholders. Again, all this stuff, and he's right, all this stuff governments could be doing, but they're just choosing not to. And this is the big decision that Liz Truss is going to face. Does she do something or does she do nothing? If she does nothing, it is going to cause huge damage and even more uh, you know, right, casualties uh, to this, and even on the periphery of this. You know, if you haven't got money to pay your, your gas and electricity bill, what about money to pay your mortgage or even money to pay your rent? You know, that there's going to be so so much stuff and so many stories that we hear in in during winter that are just going to be so so heartbreaking. Um, it's 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 going to be an absolute disaster. It really really is. But there is no sign that any of these things are going to happen. So what will? That's a really easy to answer. People will simply stop paying their bills. Gas and electricity, rents and mortgage will all go unpaid. So too will council taxes and water bills. People without money cannot pay. The economy is used to some people being able to unpay, but that happens all the time for all sorts of reasons. But mass non-payment is something quite completely different. When a lone person can't pay their bills, the problem is theirs to sort out. When millions cannot, the situation changes. The problem is that the energy companies, banks, councils, and landlords who have gone unpaid with no realistic hope of getting their money. What are, We are simply not prepared for this to happen. It has not happened on a scale in, in that much in my lifetime. But there has also been no event like this in my lifetime either. It has not happened like this before. So... Yeah, I mean, that's just something I, you know, I want to point out. It's you know, it's going to be really bad, but something I just want to jump onto, um, which we've heard talk before, is the talk of zombie companies, because then this is more right-wing um, libertarian propaganda that they're putting out. So, so worse uh, than that, of course, are the right-wingers like Liz Truss and think that, uh, and think that, what is to come will be great for the economy. This is true. They think many of these right-wing libertarians who are, in, who are going in power at the moment think that this coming economic crash is going to be absolutely great. It's going to be wonderful. They're even eagerly anticipating the collapse of lots of employers because they call them zombie companies who, who they claim drag the economy down. But what they forget is it's real people and work in those companies and real people without salary cannot pay their bills. And right wingers assume that everyone has savings to get through a crisis. It's another one of their fantasies. 
The reality is that real people out of work will not be paying this time. So, yeah, I mean, he, he goes on to, you know, to say just, just how bad it is. But I think that's, you know, it, it lays out just how bad this crisis is really going to be. And, and I agree with him. But unfortunately, um, the worst is yet to come. And I think it all happens in November. November is when all this comes to a head. And it's really, really worrying. Really worrying. Because you've got a government that won't step in won't do what is necessary and you've got the ideology from these right-wing libertarians who are cheering on the recession that's about to happen you may not see them publicly doing it but just as we've seen with liz trust talk about these zombie companies well hold on these zombie companies are filled with real people who do their work who get paid and get paid a salary when they're cheering on these companies failing they are cheering on people losing their jobs and a lot of jobs because they're not talking about small or medium companies they're talking about big companies we're talking companies that employ in the thousands failing and when you've got multiple companies like they are cheering on saying that they want to fail all these zombie companies oh yeah they're going to be fine because other companies will come along and take those places that's not going to happen overnight and yet hundreds of thousands of people are going to suffer because of this all because of their crazy right-wing fantasy nonsense that they've got going on so trust me we ain't seen nothing yet unfortunately uh, all of it is going to be bad very very bad so with that said thank you very much for watching <laughs> so yeah so as always you know please do remember to hit that like share and subscribe button and of course down below there are links to my patreon page and one donation link and as always thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all